Guide to Overcome Picky Eaters with Autism. An article by Enabling Autism LLC. Disclaimer. We are not certified nor licensed to give professional advice. These are our own personal opinions and recommendations based on our own personal experience with our autistic child. Please use sound judgment and consult with your child's doctors, therapists, and specialists. Before we start, please subscribe and like this video to support our efforts in sharing information to parents as well as creating learning contents for our autistic children. Thank you so much. Guide to Overcome Picky Eaters with Autism Picky eaters are common in both children with and without autism. However, children with autism are more likely to experience mealtime difficulties such as highly limited food choices, rigid eating habits and food-related tantrums. Consequently, parents who feed children on the autism spectrum frequently deal with substantially greater and more complicated challenges connected to meals. Or, at the very least, fussy eating behaviors. In this article, we will look at a variety of tactics to assist picky eaters learn to eat better. The objective is to help kids feel more at ease trying new foods and to make mealtimes more enjoyable for everyone. Our end goal is to establish a consistent meal, snack routine and enable the child to consume a variety of healthful foods that are consistent with the family's overall meal plan. Number 1. Rule out gastrointestinal, GI, or medical issues. Parents should reach out to doctors and pediatric gastroenterologists when a child on the autistic spectrum is having feeding problems because they can rule out medical factors. Children with autism frequently experience gastrointestinal distress, and many of them are having difficulty to express their discomfort. Your child's doctor can assist you in determining whether this is the case and how to proceed. As a result, parents need to be proactive about attempting to find the cause of their child's discomfort. Here are a few of the more typical GI problems that kids might encounter. Acid reflux is common among children. However, with children on autism spectrum, the disorders might directly tie to behavioral abnormalities, such as extremely hyperactive, jumping or acting irrationally, or crying in the time that the acid backs up in the child's throat. Eosinophilic esophagitis, EOE, an allergic swallowing condition. This might cause children to experience gagging or choking sensations while consuming food. It can produce pain and discomfort that almost always leads to behavioral problems in children with autism. Bowel movement issues that is linked to a child's diet. Diarrhea. This can be from the child's diet but can also result from the malabsorption of some sugars or from the GI system moving quickly, which does not give the stool enough time to firm up. Constipation can make eating very uncomfortable for a child who feels full or has a stomachache, whether it's brought on by a restricted diet or delayed toileting, which is very common in children with autism. Number 2. Keep snack, mealtime casual and fun. Children in general can be rebellious. They would want to do the opposite of what we want. If we approach snack, mealtime as a task, they might read off that and will fight us, because they can. Therefore, Establishing an upbeat routine to snacks, meals, whether playing some music in the background, or sing some lullabies to lighten the mood is highly recommended. Give out praises for every positive progress. Oh such a good boy or girl, way to go strong, your child's name, finish your food then we will go play, whatever games they enjoy. Number 3. Establish a reward and consequence system for mealtime performance. Communicate clearly with your child what will await them once they have completed their food. Whether their favorite videos or favorite toys. I highly advise against having videos on and front of the child. That should be used as post-meal reward. If they do not behave appropriately during mealtime, please carry out the consequences by withholding the rewards. Be firm on this and you might experience many meltdowns before it is fully understood by your child. I often have a little sweet such as a piece of well-loved chocolate or candy at the of well-behaved mealtimes. With this, the child has something to look forward to immediately. Number 4. Use a timer. Communicate clearly with your child on how long snack, meal will last. This way, the child will know that there will be an end. I would want to recommend 10 to 15 minutes for snacks and 30 to 45 minutes for meals. 
you can adjust to reasonable duration and portion that best fit for your child and increase success rate. The key is having the countdown timer. I find that my son is more rushing through his food with a visible timer. Number 5. Establish daily snacks, meal schedule. Parents usually make up for poor performance meals with extra snacks. That could be the mistake that will further diminish next meal's performance. We have to test out portion and frequencies to best fit each child, but a consistent schedule is really important. Here is the schedule for my son that you can use as a guide. Breakfast around 8.30 to 9 a.m. Light breakfast, we start out with light warm honey water. Then an 8 ounces of kid protein drink such as Pediasure or Orgain, and some lightly toast bread. Mid-morning snack around 10.30 a.m. One tube of squeeze yogurt and water intake. Note, no calories drinks, just water. Lunch around noon. Mainly prepared meals from Costco such as burger, Dino nuggets, chicken and cheese taquitos, or Ida bagel bites pizza etc. I always have some mini sweet peppers and, or salad. No sweet drinks, just water with meal. Mid-afternoon snack around 2.30 p.m. Small portion of preferred chips and juice. Afternoon smoothie around 4 p.m. 10 to 12 ounces of homemade fruit smoothie. Frozen with milk powder and added vitamins. Water intake after smoothie. Dinner around 6.30 p.m. Because no solid food since 2.30 p.m., dinner was desired and often consume at pace. After dinner, some fruits such as grapes, pears, and oranges. My son is on the skinny side, but his daily intake of water, fruits, snacks, and nutritious food is well balanced. You can shift things around to best fit family schedule and your child needs. The key is to limit snacks between meals and at least 90 minutes before meals. Children will feel full from calorie-rich beverages and lose interest in main meals. No food after 9 p.m., unless special occasions. Number 6. Establish dedicated snack-slash-meal stations. The key is to only serve and allow food to be eaten at designated area. For my son, the kitchen island is for breakfast, lunch, and snacks. Dining table is for dinner. I don't allow snacks to be eaten on sofa or anywhere else. This way, we set the tone and expectations for our children. Number 7. Introducing new food slowly. When introducing new food, serve it with known less desired food on the same day. Eat them first and have positive feedback without making eye contact. Your child is observing and would be curious about it. Don't offer the first time as she he might not be too convincing. When it is time to offer, don't ask, just break off, get a very small portion and put over on their plate. Don't say anything, just a gesture to try and continue with eating. That way, we remain neutral and let their curiosity kick in. Serve lunch or dinner about an hour later than normal to increase willingness to try and serve out small portion of the new food. The success rate is much higher with this approach. Number 8. Offer controlled choices. When the child is making choices of their food, she, he is more likely to eat it. So when you offer the choices, make sure you are okay with any of the selections. For example, I offer my son mini cucumber, mini sweet peppers, and salad as options for vegetable. Regardless of his choice, I will be happy. Number 9. Involvement in dinner preparation. If it is possible, involve your child in the preparation of dining table. As simple as carrying up the salad bowl, getting utensils, or place a napkin at each seating. Give out praises on each task completion. It is very good for the child to be part of the process and she he would be more likely to be civil at the table. Number 10. Be consistent, persistent, and patient. It's crucial to be patient and persistent. It takes multiple exposures to get used and familiar to new routines and or food. Try very hard to stay with the schedule, even after a bad meal. Always start out with small steps and set achievable goals. There will be days things out of order, take deep breaths and reset often.